I've been meaning to tackle this iconic character for a while now, but only recently did I land on an idea that I would felt would do this High Marshal of the Black Templars justice. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to kitbash a Primus Halbrecht. So the basis of this conversion came from two kits, the Torgarod in a plastic set and the Finecast Halbrecht. By combining these two kits, I was able to create something visibly impressive enough to represent Halbrecht's status, but also build something that was also recognizable as being the High Marshal. My first step was to cannibalize the Halbrecht Finecast kit. This would give me a number of components that I could use to add some flavor to the Torgaradin kit. However, the Finecast was, for the most part, a single piece model, which meant I needed to get soaring. The first thing I needed to remove was the right shoulder pad. This was quite an arduous task due to how thick this piece was, but I started by sawing down into the shoulder. I moved around the shoulder as I saw to ensure that I wasn't veering off in any one direction. In addition to sawing away the shoulder pad, I also took part of the arm along with me. This would need to still be removed, but removing the whole thing from the body first would make the task much easier. With the whole right arm now removed, I began the delicate process of sawing and trimming away the arm from the shoulder pad, whilst keeping the hanging skulls intact. I began by carefully sawing alongside the skulls, moving up towards the base of the shoulder pad. With this done, I started to saw horizontally beneath the bottom of the shoulder pad until the arm came free. At this stage, I was left with just the shoulder pad and the skulls hanging from it. However, there were still a few bits of arm and resin flashing on the skulls that needed to be removed. I used a combination of my knife and my clippers to remove these. Finecast resin is fairly soft, so this process wasn't too tricky. I also took this opportunity to flatten out both the back and the underside of the shoulder pad so that it was more squared off, ready to be attached to its new body. Now that I had my shoulder pad, the next component to harvest from the older Halbrecht model was his head. The problem here is that his gorget is quite tall and so obscures the lower part of his jaw. Removing just his head would be extremely difficult, so I instead opted to take the whole collar along with me. So I began sawing once again. I've roughly followed the line of the chain. This was cutting away more of the torso than I would need, but it's better to remove too much at this stage and trim back than it is to not cut away enough. I continued sawing until the head and the gorget were freed from the torso. The next few components were much easier to modify. The sword was perfect as it already was, but I wanted to grab the small candlestick holder for the top of the power pack. So I began by first removing these components from the sprue. Once again, I grabbed my saw and carefully removed the adornment from the top of the power pack and cleaned up any mold lines as I did so. And with that, I had all the resin components that I needed so I could begin the actual construction of Halbrecht. I chose to use Tor Garadin as a basis for Halbrecht because I wanted a model that was big and imposing, something that would really allow the finished model to stand out as a chapter master. The Tor Garadin kit was also lacking in any really obvious Imperial Fist iconography, beyond a small shoulder pad and the miniature shield, both of which could be replaced. In addition to this, the large cavity around the head would give me ample room to add Halbrecht's head and his gorget. So I began by clipping away everything that required me to assemble the main body alongside the backpack and then cleaned up the components. My first task was to clean up some of the sensors inside the head cavity of the Gravis armor. Now this was done in order to remove some of that Imperial Fist styling, but also to make sure that I had plenty of room for Halbrecht's head. So I used my knife to carefully cut and trim a few of these away. Once removed, I was able to glue the torso together. Trimming components like these is generally easy to do when everything is disassembled, so try to make those adjustments before assembly where you can. With the torso built, I could do the same to the legs, completing the main bulk of the body. At this stage, I was ready to attach my cannibalized Halbrecht head. However, as I had suspected, after comparing the head against the cavity, I found that there was far too much chest still attached to it. To resolve this, I set about it with my knife, removing most of the resin below the gorget with a series of trims. I frequently tested the fit to ensure that I was making the right amount of cuts in the right places until I was happy that the head was fitting snugly. 
Then I brought in my super glue and made the attachment permanent. Torgaridon features a weapon and sensor array mounted to his power pack alongside a cable that ran towards his power fist. As I didn't want to include these with this model, I needed to remove the pipe as well as the mounting points that had been sculpted into the top of the pack. I started by clipping away the pipe. The remaining boxy protuberances wouldn't look too out of place against the model, so these remained. Then, with my knife, I trimmed away the raised plastic bumps from the top of the pack and carefully carved out the banding again to keep a smooth surface all the way around. With the backpack removed of its tall Garridan remnants, I could attach the small candelabra or iron halo or whatever it's supposed to be. In order to ensure that I had a good strong bond with which to attach this, I chose to once again pin it into place. I grabbed my pin vise and started to drill a 1mm hole first into the base of the Grimdark Lumiere and then again into the top of the power pack, getting as central as possible with both holes. To strengthen that joint, I took a length of 1mm thick steel wire, applied a little super glue to the end and inserted it into the bottom of the candlestick holder. After giving it a chance to dry, I then clipped the wire so that only a couple of millimeters were left protruding from the bottom. I tested that the wire wasn't too long for the hole in the power pack, and once I was happy, I applied a little more glue and fixed the small, what I assume was supposed to be an iron halo, into place. The next item to attach was the resin shoulder pad that I had removed from Halbrecht. I chose not to attach it to the right side of the model where it was originally positioned, as I didn't want to mess up the placement of Torgarin's cape. However, as Garadon comes with a full length left arm, I need to work out exactly how much of the arm to remove to make way for the new shoulder. So I temporarily blue tapped the shoulder pad to the torso and then compared the arm. This revealed that I need to make my cut just above the elbow. In addition to this elbow cut, I was going to slightly reposition the arm, so I also needed to clip away the pipe as well. This wasn't a big deal though, as I felt it better suited the Imperial Fist than the Black Templars anyway. With the main bulk of the arm prepped, I was able to glue it into place. I angled it slightly forward as I did so in order for the position of the hanging skulls to make a little more sense. However, before I could glue on the arm, I needed to trim the small console away from the left arm. It wouldn't have fitted in with the aesthetic and it would have gotten in the way of the hanging skulls. So I clipped away the raised screen and protruding optic before tidying everything up with a knife. Finally, it could be attached to the shoulder. Now that I had the arm ready, it could be glued to the underside of the shoulder pad with some super glue. I should note that depending on how much of the skulls you removed earlier on, you may find the positioning here to be a little snug, but you can always carefully trim back even further if you need to. Now this is where I made a bit of a mistake. I had completely forgotten about the lantern that Halbrecht carries in his left hand. But luckily for me though, the Black Templar upgrade sprue came with a pretty good approximation of the lantern attached to a chain. All I needed to do was to clip away the top of the purity seal and trim it before following the same drilling and pinning process that I'd followed for the iron halo thing. This would have no doubt been much easier to task to perform had I not already attached the arm, but it does show that making mistakes in these kind of things is entirely normal and most of the time they are pretty easy to resolve. With the left arm completed, I was now able to tackle the right arm. Torgaridon only comes with an upper right arm because of his huge power fist occupies the bottom half, so I needed to acquire one from an intercessor. Now we'll be losing out on the bionic arm here, but I figured that the armor would have covered that anyway. So I grabbed one of the bolter arms and used my saw to cut away just above the elbow and at the wrist before trimming both cuts clean with my knife. With the forearm sourced, I now had something to attach Halbrecht's sword of the High Marshals to, which I had taken directly from the sprue. This required no additional alterations beyond drilling in some holes and using some wire to add a pin to the sword. However, I didn't attach the hand just yet. First, I glued the new forearm to the Torgaridon upper arm. The segments between the armor really helped to hide this join here and it allowed me to adjust the positioning slightly. With the forearm fixed in place, I tested out the fit of the sword and then glued it into place with some super glue once I was happy with the positioning. The only thing left to do then was to attach the tall garret and shoulder pad to finish off the right arm. 
The model at this point was pretty much completed. All that needed to be done now was to bulk out the Black Templar stylings just a little bit more. I took some more components from the Black Templar upgrade sprue, which included the Terminator shields and some purity seals. The shield required a little adjustment, but this was attached in place of the Imperial Fist one. I just need to make sure that I left enough room to attach the cloak later on. The purity seals were then distributed across the rest of the model, and with that, all I was left to do was to give the model a suitable paint job. And here we have the completed Primus Halbrecht, High Marshal of the Black Templars. I painted him the same colours as his original model to help tie him in to his firstborn incarnation, and if you're interested in how I tackled that, there's a link on screen to my live stream where I painted this guy up. Overall, I'd say that this model was probably one of my harder challenges so far. Not only in planning out the model to ensure that it was close enough to be identifiable as being Halbrecht, but also in the conversion itself. Working with fine casts and trimming away the parts from the old model was much harder work than just grabbing them from another kit. However, I felt that it was important to carry out these more iconic aspects over to Halbrecht's Primus incarnation. After seeing the finished model, I think that I could have included a few chains as well as the combi melter. However, I am quite happy with using Tor Garadan as a basis. His Gravis armor gives him a great presence and the cloak over the shoulder is a good callback to his original model. I plan on tackling Pedro Cantor in my next Primus character conversion, which will conclude the first trilogy. If you haven't already done so, then you can check out my Cato Sicarius guide and you can find a link to that on screen now. And so the final thing to say is a huge thank you to all of my supporters. Whether you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links, your help is what keeps this channel alive and is what allows me to build these conversions for you. If you would like to help out, then you can check out my Buy Me A Coffee page, where you can support me as a one-off or as an ongoing membership. And you can find a link to that in the below. And so, until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.